name is Julia Neubauer from the Fraunhofer Institute for Biomedical Engineering, and I am the deputy coordinator of the IMI project EBISC2, the European Bank for IPS Cells. In this name, I would like to welcome you all today to our innovation showcase at the ISSCR 2022. After the project started in 2014, EBISC is now in the sustainability phase. Our fully operational bank has more than 900 IPS cell lines from healthy and deceased donors and delivers to customers in Europe, the United States and Asia. We would like to show you today how the sustainable infrastructure of EBUS could also support you in your scientific projects with some short presentations from a wide range of research areas. We will give you an insight into the necessary ethical framework methods of reprogramming and gene editing, but also possibilities of crop preservation and our quality control. After this short introduction, I would now like to open the presentations and hand over to the other speakers. My name is Andreas Kurtz. I'm a cell biologist with a background in ethics and also genetics. I am responsible for the data management and also somewhat of the ethics framework management in EBISC. I will present you information about the ethics framework in EBISC. I want to go over the points which we are looking at in the informed consent review process. First of all, the donor needs to be informed what we do with the cells, with the donated material, and that the cells can be used. So the donor needs to agree that the cells can be used for the production of induced pluripotent stem cells. Also, the derivation of IPS cells and their sharing with international partners to support both academic and industry research must be included in the consent information sheet. The cells and or derivatives may be used to generate genetic data, including whole genome sequencing, and this data may be made available to researchers. This raises issues of data protection, and we have a whole framework on this in EBISC organized. Fourth, the clinical data may also be disclosed to researchers by a healthcare professional. If the donor wishes to withdraw, there, they may have remaining primary samples returned or destroyed and can stop further dis disclosure of health information. But the IPS cells, which are already generated and perhaps distributed, and the associated data will not be destroyed. And finally, personal data management must be described in the informed consent information sheet already. So is the data anonymized, is it pseudonymized, and other issues related to personal data management must be in the informed consent information. My name is uh, Christian Clausen. I'm the chief scientific officer at uh, Bionia. Bionia is uh, located in Denmark and we are around uh, 90 people working uh, with the companies, universities and hospitals uh, in Europe and uh, uh, globally. So first of all, I want to uh, speak to you about uh, how Bionia is working uh, in EBISC uh, with uh, reprogramming and establishing IPS cell lines, both as a depositor, but also as a, an end user. So Bionia is a consortium partner, and we are also a key depositor in EBISC. Um, as just mentioned, Bionia is located in Denmark. We are a ITO and we have been established since 1982. We are specialized in generating in vitro models, primarily within CNS, immunology, and cancer. And we have been consortium partner in EPIS-1 and now in EPIS-2, and also a key depositor in both EPIS-1 and EPIS-2. We are collaboration partner in a large number of uh, public-private partnerships using IPSCs for in vitro modeling. And what we have learned from these partnerships is that the quality of IPS cells impact results of research and good quality IPS cells, they risk the projects in terms of resources and scientific endpoints. So our, our work with IPS cells started back in 2010, and we have since then established a lot of different 
work, work, physical workflows and quality control panels. And eBISC has been uh, the optimal public-private consortium to, to develop these to the highest standards for generating IPSCs that has been deposited in EBIS2. This is our first publication back in 2014, uh, describing the method that we are still using. And on your, the right side, you see the QC panel that we have, uh, with, that we are working with and implemented at Bionia together with the EBIS consortium partners. Besides being an depositor in EBIS, we are also an end user of IPSCs for research. And uh, being an end user, the EBIS repository means for us, it's a quality stem on lines that we use across projects. It's, it, it ensures back of the lines when the specific projects are running low. It's a minimal administrative burden to get the lines. And it's a continuous relevant cell line data sharing platform because publications are linked into the EPS webpage whenever the lines are published. So I will continue uh, my brief talk on gene editing. And this technology has enabled uh, us to expand the, the, the catalog of lines. And for Bionia, it is a, an essential technology working with IPS cells. So Bionia has extensive gene editing capabilities. We use gene editing as a key enabling technology to generate novel in vitro models for understanding disease mechanisms. Our gene editing team has worked with different stakeholders from companies to research institutions, both in Denmark and globally. We uh, have experience in repairing mutations or deletions, introduction of, of mutations or deletions, insertion of inducible gene cassettes in safe lococytes, conditional knockouts, and reporters. And we have worked now for a number of years to really establish a very efficient uh, workflow that we've also been used to generate uh, lines that are deposited uh, in EBS2. So this is uh, showing the lines that we have generated in EBS2. And you see on the left side, a unique identifier, which actually makes it, makes it very easy to uh, see which type of research, which type of papers these lines has, has been used in. Uh, but we have made, as you can see, a number of different types of lines. They have been quality controlled to the highest standards and they are deposited in EPS2. And actually these lines, a number of these lines are used in proof of concept studies uh, within, for example, uh, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease uh, research or Huntington's. And exactly this activity is extremely important uh, in order to actually show that the gene edited lines has a relevance because that is eventually what is going to happen with these lines. They should be used to research and to find out uh, new disease mechanisms and potentially new targets, for example, for, for new drugs. So this is a perfect example uh, where we have collaborated with uh, another IMI consortium called Adapted. And we made a panel of, uh, of uh, gene edited lines, uh, specifically uh, related to uh, this risk gene called APOE, -E, which is uh, a risk gene for Alzheimer's disease. And these lines have been used in a number of studies now to try to elucidate uh, how this risk gene actually can drive uh, the Alzheimer. So if you want to learn more, please reach out to us. My name is Juliana Laza, and I am a senior research scientist at NYU Comprehensive Epilepsy Center. Together with Dr. Orin Davinsky, who is the director of our center, we have worked on a research study called Personalized Medicine Platform for Epilepsy. The goal of the study was to develop human IPSC lines from blood samples of subjects with epileptic encephalopathies and prove that the precise medicine platform is an effective approach to discover drugs for them. Evis was the one who generated 20 human IPSC lines from the collected blood samples of the subjects that were enrolled in our study. First, blood samples were processed into PBMC, peripheral blood mononuclear cells. Once processed, the samples were used to generate the IPSC lines, which were subsequently sent to us. 
The IPSC lines were provided by eDisc in a timely fashion and a detailed COA certificate of analysis was provided for each line. The team at eBIS was extremely helpful, knowledgeable, which made the entire process to run smoothly. We have distributed some of the IPSC lines that we have received from eBISC to basic scientists who are conducting further research to find a personalized treatment for the subjects. There are no results published yet, but all the scientists were very satisfied with the quality of the IPSC lines. The fact that the ethics was already sorted meant that they were able to save a considerable amount of time and attribute that to their clinical research. The extensive catalog of IPSC lines offered by IBIS is an asset to the basic scientist community who want to conduct for their studies. To conclude, I would like to take this opportunity and thank everyone at IBIS for their work and professionalism. It has been a great experience working with them and we look forward to future collaborations. My name is Ralf Kettenhof and I'm working for Fraunhofer IBMT. I'm glad to lead you through my presentation of Harmonize QC. Within eBESC, we have two banking entities. The first one is the European Collection of Authenticated Cell Coaches, ECAC, which is situated in UK. They are the main eBESC uh, IPS line banking entity, and they're responsible for the culture, expansion, cryopreservation, banking, and quality control of eBESC IPS lines. And they are the official eBESC distributor worldwide. The second banking entity is the Fraunhofer Institute for Biomedical Engineering, IBMT, in Germany. This is the Mera Bank of eBISC. They're doing exactly the same, like ECAC, but we're not distributing cells here. Within the eBISC project, the harmonization between the banking entities was a major milestone. So we had to uh, harmonize the standard operating procedures for the culture expansion, cryopreservation, and banking of the IPS cells, as well as for the quality control of the IPS lines. And this is the topic uh, I want to lead you through more in detail now. The standard cell culture quality control comprise sterility testing for absence of um, uh, bacterial and fungal uh, microorganism contamination and the absence of mycoplasma. In addition, we do virology, the testing for contamination with um, human pathogens like HIV-1, 2, HPV and HCV. Furthermore, we do viability testing where time to confluence of IPS cell cultures after thawing is the major parameter as well as standard viability assays. And we are looking for cell identity, it means we do short tandem repeat uh, analysis. The IPS specific quality control comprises phenotypic analysis of the cells by microscopic monitoring and documentation of IPS cell colony form of morphology. We also do fax analysis of pluripotency markers like SSEA4, TRA160, and OCT4, where we have to have more than 70% of positive cells for these markers. We do also fax analysis of differentiation marker, which is SSEA1, where we have to have less than 10% positive cells. And we're looking for genomic stability. So we're doing cardiology by G-banding. The last set of experiments we do is a test of differentiation potential of our IPS lines. We do a trilineage differentiation and analyze the pluripotency of the cell lines via qPCR by testing for uh, all three germ layers in relation to endogenous controls. These comprise markers for ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm, as shown here and comparison to pluripotency markers that should be downregulated in comparison to our endogenous controls. In summary, I've introduced to you the two banking entities uh, of EBISC, which are ECAC and front of IBMT. I've shown you the importance of harmonized SOPs and quality control. And finally, I hope I've shown you that our harmonized quality control guarantees the highest quality of EBISC IPS lines for your research. Hello, my name is Ina Meiser. 
I'm leading the work group Cryosensor Technology at Fraunhofer IBM T. And uh, today I'm going to present you EBISC's effort on cryopreservation. First, why is there a need for uh, the cryopreservation of bulk quantities? Well, in biomedical and pharmaceutical industries, there is an urgent need for large cell numbers. When you, for example, consider the quantity of cells that are required for screening, well, they vary, of course, uh, according to the compound library that you are going to use. And the cell numbers that you will need go up to 2 billion cells per batch. Regarding cell quantities that are required for uh, therapeutics, they of course also um, depend on the respective disease that you are going to tackle. However, benchmarks here also are from 300 million uh, up to 2 billion cells per patient. And considering these cell numbers and recalling the standard frozen stock of your cells, which is a cryovial comprising 1 million cells in 1 ml, uh, you see that this cannot be an option to feed large-scale suspension-based bioreactors that are mostly used in order to generate large amount of cells. So, and the option to apply dozens of cryovials in order to feed these uh, suspension-based bioreactors is also not convenient. That means we need to have another format, and this is why we were exploring uh, cryo bags in order to see whether these are uh, applicable for the cryopreservation of large cell numbers in order to immediately feed suspension-based bioreactors. So the aim of this study in EBISC was the freezing of 1 billion cells per batch, so per cryo bag, as an application-oriented format in order to seed bioreactors to enable a large-scale cell number. The upscaling strategy that we applied here is uh, schematically shown on this slide for human-induced pluripotent stem cells. We uh, chose the iPSCs as a starting material for our pilot studies on the bulk cryopreservation because uh, differentiation processes of uh, these cells can be carried out optionally in uh, large-scale bioreactors subsequently. So we started from one frozen EBISC file. We thought this and expanded them according to the EBISC SOPs in manual 2D culture processes until the uh, um, desired cell number was reached for the uh, bulk freezing study. In a first step of the bulk freezing study, we investigated the, infect, the effect of an increased cell concentration per ml in standard cryovials on the recovery. We applied the standard 1 million cell per milliliter concentration and increased this up to 20 million cells per milliliter. Secondly, we then investigated the uh, labware format and we compared the standard cryovial to cryobags and checked on their performance. So here we again tested the standard cell concentration of 1 million cells per milliliter and increased up to 20 million cells per milliliter because these cell concentration were found to perform equally well. But uh, still we were in a relatively small volume uh, range from uh, 5 to 10 milliliters. So finally, the final step was that we expanded the best found approach to a large volume uh, cryobags in order to freeze as many cells as possible and came to 50 milliliter in total with a cell concentration of 20 million cells per milliliter. And that gave us a final uh, cell number of 1 billion cell per bag with which then suspension-based bioreactors were inoculated, either for further expansion of uh, iPSCs with their maintained stemness characteristics, or also for uh, subsequent differentiation processes uh, like uh, the neural differentiation, for example, using the Ioni 10C13 cell line. And at each point in our study, a uh, focus was placed on the GMP readiness of the single processes. The quality controls that we have done during the study were manifold. So again, we chose here the uh, different approaches, standard cryovials, standard cryovials with increased cell concentration, and finally the cryo bag. And uh, we applied an equilibrium freezing protocol. And after thawing, we assessed, uh, for example, viability, cell number, gene, protein expression, and so on and so forth. Some representative uh, results are 
shown here. For example, upon thawing, we checked on the viability and the cell number. And what we saw was that there is um, a minor difference between the cryo vials, the standard format uh, currently used in cryo preservation uh, versus the uh, cryo bag. And the viability in both cases uh, exceeded the 80%, which is very good. And regarding the cell number, it was even possible to recover um, approximately 10% uh, more of the cells in, in comparison to the uh, standard cryo vials. The further analysis, we, for example, uh, did the facts analysis uh, where we counted uh, positive events for uh, the uh, stemness marker. We see here that there is um, no difference, no statistically significant difference between the uh, stemness markers shown here between the cryo vials in different uh, cell densities and in the cryo bag. And when we uh, seed the uh, cells frozen in the cryo bag immediately in such a suspension-based bioreactor, uh, we saw that there is, uh, again, no difference between the standard cryo vial and the cryo bag uh, regarding the aggregation rate. So in order to conclude, I will give you here some take-home messages. So here are some comparable results of the post-fall recovery in standard cryovirus and cryobacks. What we did see was that there are some cell line dependencies, which we see in normal culture as well, especially uh, observed uh, regarding the attachment and the aggregation rates upon thawing. However, uh, we did show that their immediate seeding in suspension-based bioreactors is possible, and we were also able to uh, form a subsequent differentiation in this bioreactor so that we can uh, conclude that a bulk cryopreservation has been enabled in cryobanks. Hello, my name is Charlie Arbor. I'm a senior research fellow here at the Queen Square Institute of Neurology at University College London. I've been growing human stem cells for around 15 years now, and so I've seen all sorts of quality of, of lines. Um, but my current research focuses on stem cell models of familial Alzheimer's disease. Our lab first interacted with EBISC and its previously related project StemBank um, via the sharing of patient-derived fibroblasts. And this is through a bank of fibroblasts that we set up with our clinical colleagues here at Queen Square of patient-derived lines of people living with neurodegenerative conditions. We then received back the reprogrammed iPSCs um, specifically for my project. I've had five or six lines with mutations in APP and Puisnel N1. And there were two real main benefits to this interaction with eBISC. Firstly, it enabled us to free up resources in the lab to focus on the project uh, but probably more importantly was our confidence in the QC done by EBISC and the standardization between each line. The lines that we received were always of superb quality, um, especially revival um, of the cryopreserved cells was, was brilliant. We had multiple wells from each frozen vial. The cultures were always clean and we had really high confidence in the quality behind these cells. Um, since we've received the cells, I know a number of colleagues who have also received lines from eBISC and they similarly are happy with the, the quality of the cells. What this has meant for my own work is that I was able to generate one of the largest panels of familial Alzheimer's disease stem cell lines, which enabled us to try to understand some of the clinical heterogeneity between different mutations. As an example, in our molecular psychiatry paper in 2020, we saw at least four different mechanisms in a panel of uh, seven or nine familial AD lines. In all, uh, we've had a great relationship with eBISC um, that has enabled us to increase the productivity in the lab and the number of cell lines that we work with. Um, but most importantly, uh, we have huge confidence in the cell lines that we receive from eBISC and the quality control that goes on behind them. And with that, I'd like to say thank you. After these really informative and helpful presentations, I would like to first thank those of you who have contributed your time and input. And of course, all of you for your interest and attention. 
I hope we were able to show you that EBIS can support you in a wide variety of areas and that you also have the possibility to hand over specific tasks to us. We look forward to a possible cooperation and wish you many more good contacts and meetings at the ISSCR 2022.